In 2005, our family took a vacation. We drove from Oregon, where we lived at the time, down to San Diego, California to spend some time on the beach. On this vacation, I think Dad was just as excited about a book he was reading as the vacation we were taking. I'll tell you the name of the book in a minute, but Dad, I want to know, were you more excited about the book you were reading than the vacation? Well, I can't say that I was more excited about the book than our vacation, but I will say the book made the vacation more exciting. The book was filling in some gaps in my financial knowledge that had just been missing. And understanding what those gaps were and how we could fill in was going to make all the difference in our financial future. And I could just fill that and know that this was the truth that I'd been looking for for years. I remember years ago when we were first married, so that was more like 15 years before that, you read a lot about financial topics. You read more more of what was happening in our whole financial economics uh, of our society and of the world. But I also remember, oh, it was way above my head. And um, I also remember it was kind of depressing, whatever you were reading about. And I noticed that you just kind of eventually quit reading all that material. Well, reading that is is important to know what's going on in the world. We don't want to bury our hand head in the sand. But at the same time, there's not a lot about you, what you and I can do about what the World Economic Forum is doing or what the Kissinger Report is doing to the uh, rest of the world or what our Federal Reserve System has done to our currency. But this book was given us the how-to on the you and me level, on what we can do to fight back against that. And, you know, that's the most important thing. What can I do today to make our life better for tomorrow? We can't change uh, what those big organizations are doing, what the government's doing. We can change what we're doing so that those government and world organizations don't affect us as much. I do remember you saying, Michelle, this is the answer. This is what I've been reading about. This is the answer to all those things that I was reading about all those years. And I know that when we got married, I was kind of the spendthrift, realizing that my money was just deteriorating if we didn't use it for something. And you were more of the saver. And what this did is it married those two ideas together together. We could save and we could spend at the same time and actually get ahead doing that. Whereas either other way that we were doing it, your way or my way at that time, it was not going to work. Some of the financial challenges that we were being faced with all those f first 15 years of our marriage were the same challenges that other people face. You know, yeah. you make so much money and then you're taxed so much. To save money for the future, we'll, we're told we have to lock it up and we can't use it. There's also inflation. You go to the store the next day and you know things cost more. So there's a difficulty with saving. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were faced with just like anyone else. So the solution to this, the book you were reading that got you so excited on this vacation was Becoming Your Own Banker by R. R. Nelson Nash, Unlocking the Infinite Banking Concept. So what is the infinite banking concept so we can understand how it helps us to overcome these problems? Well, I think to answer that question, we need to address what is banking. And banking is the most essential economic business that has been founded since man walked the face of the earth. It's one of the oldest professions. And what they do is they are the, the middleman for just about every financial transaction that takes place. Um, even if we're not using, quote, a bank, we are using banking concepts when we exchange because money that is just hoarded um, deflates. Scripture tells us about that. Do not store up your wealth here on earth where moth and rust corrupt and thieves break in and steal. That's what happens if money's not actively being used all the time. And so... Banks take other people's money and they lend it out to other people. And sometimes it's they're lending it out to the same people they, they took it on deposit from. And they act as the middleman to keep money circulating in society so the economy can grow and that we can make 
uh, abundance out of scarcity because that's the first rule of economics is that we live in a, an environment of scarcity. There's only so much gold. There's only so much silver. There's only so much lithium in the world. There's only so many resources. So how can we support more and more people on the planet? And then there's the people that think, well, we can't, so we got to kill off the population through abortion and other means. Mm -hmm. And then there's the people that say, no, we can be creative just like our creator put in us, and we can make abundance out of the scarcity. And that's where money comes in, and that's where banking is so important. So banking is an important function in the economy. It's vital. Without it, we die. Try to think of anything that is not affected by banking. Whatever business you're in, whether it's running a grocery store, a retail business, the insurance business, every one of those industries uses banking. Try to name an industry that doesn't. And you can say, oh, well, you know, I could barter with someone, mm -hmm. you know, for my goods, for your services. Well, that's great as long as the person that you want to barter with wants what you have to exchange. And that's why barter economies are always very limited in scale. So what bankers do is they create a, a large reserve of their own money that allows them to have a charter, and that charter allows them to manage other people's money. Their money never gets lent out. It's in reserve. And so to be our own banker, we have to establish a reserve account, money that we're never going to use, but that is held there so that we can leverage it and use it as collateral so that we can use someone else's money just like a bank does. So when you were reading this book about becoming your own banker, unlocking the infinite banking concept, it was explaining some of the function of banking and how we can create this kind of economic banking system in our own lives. Yes. And I think one of the reasons that people overlook this, because we live in a society that wants instant gratification. We want it yesterday. Not We don't want to have to wait for anything. And it takes time to build reserves. Mm -hmm. And knowing where to keep those reserves was the question mark that we had, because we were savers, but we would save up for a vacation, and then we would take the vacation, and now we had to start saving all over again. We would save up for a travel trailer or a piece of furniture or to replace, you know, our uh, appliances. Or a tractor. Or a tractor. And then then we didn't have any money and we were back to, oh, we got to save again. Mm -hmm. But understanding that banks never spend their money and the wealthy never, ever say, I'm going to exchange my money for that asset. They always say, I want the asset, but I want my money too. Now we're starting to get into a different way of handling finances that we were never told about because it's planned that way. We weren't ever supposed to know this because it could help middle of the road economic class rise to a higher class and allow the poorer class to rise as well. The banking industry, they're, they're playing the middleman. So they get to make money as transactions go out and as transactions come in. That's very lucrative for them. So that banking industry, they, they, they want us to need their services. And of course, we all do. But if we can also learn how we can take on some of that management ourselves, then we earn the profits of that yeah, middleman. Bringing that banking equation away from the institutions so much and bring it down to a personal level, we get to be in control of more of that. So with all the people that are paying lots of interest, on, whether it's on a credit card, whether it's on a personal loan, now instead of paying that to the bank, they get to pay it to the insurance company and recover a portion of that over a period of time. So one misconception that a lot of people have when they read or hear about the infinite banking concept, they immediately think that we're going to be able to act like the bankers that we're familiar with, like with the IMF and the Federal Reserve, that we're going we're, we're gonna to do fractional reserve lending. Oh. And fractional reserve lending is not part of the infinite banking concept. No. Uh, that is, the, that is the, um, the mismanagement of money, and that's why the United States has over $33 trillion worth of debt today. So what we really are talking about is an honest banking system. And an honest banking system makes money by velocitizing money. So, John, what's the difference between fractional reserve lending 
and velocity velocity of money. Fractional reserve lending allows a bank that has money on deposit from uh, from a saver, somebody who's saving money, that allows the bank to use that as a reserve and lend out more than what they have on deposit to other people. So they basically create money out of thin air to lend to other people so that they can earn more interest on it. And it works because uh, not everybody's going to come get the money out of the bank that they've deposited there at the same time. Mm -hmm. Or that's the theory. Mm -hmm. And uh, when when they do come to get their money, that's called a bank run. And that's happened, and it happens frequently. There's been over 565 banks that have had bank runs and failed in, since 2000. So it's not an uncommon thing. It's just not published a lot. Right. But when it when it works, it's very profitable for the bank. And so that's the reason that they continue doing it. Of course, that doesn't happen when it's at the you and me level, because that's not legal for us to do. And so, so we, uh, nor, nor is it desirable for us to do. So that's fractional reserve lending. What about this velocitizing money? So velocitizing money, that's when you can use the same money over and over again. Somebody deposits money at the bank. The bank goes out and lends it out on a credit card. The, the payments come back in on the credit card. The bank can lend those payments out now on something else, maybe a car. And the, the money comes back on that. They can lend it out for something else. And so there might be three, four different loans that the bank lends off the original depositor's money, not all at the same time. Yes. And so velocity like that, do that increases the volume of interest banks make. It does. And banks live off the volume of interest. It does. And so can we. And that's the, that's the advantage that uh, being our own banker gives us is that we can use that money over and over again. And hence, it is called the infinite banking concept. Good point. But also the infinite banking concept can also refer to what can you use this money for? People will ask us that all the time. Well, could I borrow to expand and create a business? Yes, you could. Could I borrow for this? Could I borrow for that? Could I borrow for my kids' edu education? Could I borrow to pay off my credit cards? To pay off credit cards, to do a kitchen remodel, to put a new roof on my house. Yes, you can do all those things. You're only limited by your imagination. This solves a lot of problems, financial problems that people have. If they can't access their money, if it's all locked up, well, the infinite banking concept is going to allow them to do that. Now they can access their savings so that they can use it during their lifetime instead of having to wait till retirement. The only caveat here is you have to be honest with yourself. Of course. And as Nelson Nash told me, he said, Tom, you're an honest person. If you borrow money from somebody else, you're going to make payments back and pay that back, right? How much easier is it going to be if you borrow against your own reserves is it going to be for you to pay it back? It's a whole lot easier to write a check to yourself than it is to somebody else. So it was in 2005 that we, Tom, you first read this book. But earlier that year, we had gone to our CPA who helped us with our taxes and our tax planning and strategies. And, and he was talking about how we needed to start saving for retirement or giving us some options for saving with retirement. And I remember that he handed us a sheet with a bunch of things that we could pick and choose to put into a mutual funds. And he talked about the rate of return we would need. And he, he uh, fiddled with his 10 key. And then he just shrugged his shoulders and leaned back because the amount he was saying we would need to have for retirement, I don't know how he knew that amount, um, and the amount that we would need to save, he, he was still just shrugging his shoulders. It was like throwing dice on the table. And I, I remember looking at him and thinking, he doesn't know. And, and he has no plans for us. And I remember looking at you and thinking, why are we even here? And that was earlier that year. We didn't do anything. We did, it, meeting with him gave us no clarity about what we should do for our situation. Did we really want to lock up money for all those years? Yes, we knew we needed to save for retirement, but we also had needs to live for today. And he did not offer us any solution. Well, I certainly wasn't happy about uh, the financial advice that we had been given or following up until I read this book. And this book, The Infinite Banking Concept, How to Become Your Own Banker, 
it filled in the gaps and the knowledge that I needed to know that we could secure our financial future. When we come back after break, we're going to talk about how the infinite banking concept has changed our life. Did you ever play with a set of these rings growing up? They make a great visual picture of how you should set up your finances. On top, you have the higher risk investments, the lower risk investments. This ring is debt, this ring is savings, and this ring is protection. This stand represents the economy. If there's one thing we know about the economy is that it will change, and it does, and this can change. It's unstable. What some people do when they set up their finances, they take and they go for the shiny, high risk, potentially high yield investment. Now potential return does not mean probable and it is definitely not probable. So this doesn't perform as well as they hope and they think they should add a more conservative investment that actually might return something. So they add that and believe it or not, some people will go into debt for that. Add that to the debt they already have and there's their debt ring right on top of that. If you are listening to this podcast, I hope that you have time to click the link in the description for the YouTube video and we'll tell you where in that video you can see this demonstration because it really comes alive when you see it. Well, you have these three negatives, these investments that aren't returning as well as you had hoped and your debt, which is just a draw on your finances. And people think, oh, I should probably save something. So they add savings to that. Then they look at what they have going there. It looks a little precarious. So they plop some protection right on top of that. Well, if there's one thing we know about the economy is that it will change. It is uncertain and unstable. And as soon as it changes, you lose your protection and your savings, which are the two things you want to keep most. That's the importance of doing it right. Start with protection. That makes a nice foundation for everything else you do financially. Once you have protection in, then add your savings program so you can keep more of the money you make. Next, make sure your debt is handled. Pay off the bad debts, keep the good debts. A good debt is one that gives you a tax advantage or limits your opportunity costs and allows you to make money. Once that's handled, you can do an investment. Hopefully this is something you know about because those type of investments that you know something about tend to return better. And if you have extra cash flow and want to go for one of those potential high risk, high reward investments, then you can do that too. Now, when the economy changes, you're much more secure. At McPhee Insurance, we specialize in helping people set up this layer, the protection layer, the foundation for what they do financially. We specialize in designing and selling whole life insurance that becomes this protection layer for you. It's a good foundation for everything else you do financially. If you need life insurance, or if you need to get a life insurance policy already unreviewed, we can help you with both of those things. Contact us by phone at 702-660-7000, or you can email us, team at mcfeeinsurance.com. First of all, the book changed our vacation. You were reading sections of the book to us before we would go out and play on the beach. I was very excited about it because I, I wanted you to be able to learn these concepts early because like almost everybody that talks to us, they say, we should have learned this in high school. And we didn't learn it in high school, and we didn't learn it in college, and we don't learn it in life unless we understand that the infinite banking concept is not a scam, and we delve into it to find out what it really is. The infinite banking concept is not a scam. Uh, some people have tried to turn it into a sales system to scam people, and so some people do wonder if it is a scam. But it's like any tool. A hammer is a good tool for a certain purpose, but a vandal can also use a hammer to be destructive. So when we understand what the infinite banking concept is and how it can be used to make us more um, prosperous and more have more abundance in life with the scarcity that exists in our life, then we realize that, oh, we don't need to listen to the scammers out there. The scammers are just trying to sell something and make a profit off of us without really understanding what's going on with the infinite banking concept. And they'll use anything, whether it's infinite banking or something else. That's correct. They'll find, they'll find something. So one of the things that I remember about being in that condo and you reading this book, you know, a lot of it just went right over my head and our understanding was very limited, but I remember doing the laundry at that square table that they had in the dining room there. And I was folding laundry, and John, I was folding in particular your long pants, and uh, because you had most of your height at that time. And I remember thinking, oh, we could be saving our money, saving it for the future, but we could also have access it to use it for the things we need right now, including 
long pants that we had to buy. And, you know, John, John was our oldest, but we also had other children who were not showing any signs of being short. So I knew, you know, as we were living, our expenses were not decreasing. Mm -hmm. They were increasing as our children were getting older. So to realize that we could make money, we could save money, we could also spend it infinitely. Um, that was a very exciting thought. Yeah. I remember one of the first things we did with the infinite banking concept is we came back and we spent hours trying to find out what insurance company sells the product that can be used in the infinite banking concept. Then we reached out to the person that sold us the book and he said, well, I've done that research for you. There's only about 22 companies in the United States at that time that sold the product that we were looking for. And he knew what those were. And so we bought our first policy. And from that policy, we financed a keyboard that you, the kids could plug in so that you didn't have to listen to practice piano all day long. Well, now, in all fairness, when you've got several kids that are practicing the piano, da, 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 da. <laughs> and, and you also have a little one that needs to be taking naps, and the house where the piano was, you know, the way it traveled through the house, it, it got on my nerves. And so I was wanting the children to practice less than they desired to, which, you know. <laughs> so that keyboard was excellent. They could even play while people were sleeping. And that was really a, a, a saver to my sanity, but also allowed them to be creative. So yes, that was a great purchase to make. And then the second thing is, is we used our policies just to change our cash flow in our business. We were practicing chiropractic at the time. And as in any business, cash flow waxes and wanes. You know, sometimes all the insurance companies decide to pay you this month. And next month, you don't get anything for two more months. And so the cash flow uh, became more even in our practice and it allowed us not have to uh, spend so many hours um, at the office and more time with family. And then as time went on, because the, the book uh, that Nelson Nash wrote talks a lot about financing vehicles, everyone would read that book and said, well, have you bought a car with it yet? Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we hadn't. We didn't had, had no need for a new car. But eventually, we did, and we bought a new van and financed it through that. It works infinitely, and that means it can work in all different kinds of areas in your life. Tom, I remember when you bought that first van, and we would be sharing with people about how this concept worked. And when you used the price of the van, and then you told them about what kind of monthly payments we were going to make each month to our policy, and you did the math for them, and you showed them that you had borrowed the money from your policy, but then as you were paying it back, you had all that money plus some extra. Then light bulbs went on and they were saying, oh, wow, not only do you have the van, but you also have the money back in your control that you paid for that van. Mm -hmm. That was very exciting to see. And that, was, that became a great example of how this really works. So it's given us the freedom to be able to travel more. It's also uh, given, given you the freedom to be, take, take, be able to take care of aging parents. Mm -hmm. or to be able to travel uh, when, when those needs, uh, when they had urgent needs. Or to start new businesses. And yes. I, I'm thinking even of a client right now who is an, an employee, has a job, and this allowed him to save money in a place where he could access it, not just his 401k, because 401k has all kinds of rules about accessing and paying back and taxes and penalties, all that kind of thing. But here he could save money in a place where he could access it. And he was able to start a business on the side mm -hmm. that could contribute to his income and could contribute to him as a person because this was a dream he had to be able to start this business. And uh, that gave him a great benefit. It's given us the ability to be able to move and the liberty to make changes instead of feeling stuck in a certain pattern, a certain way of life, just because we need the income. Or the clients that have told us that it is protect them from a judgment that was passed against them in a lawsuit. Otherwise, they would have lost all their assets. But because of the infinite banking concept, those assets were judgment proof. And the reason that the infinite banking concept allows us to do all of this, of course, is because we're able to have access to our savings, but we're not robbing our savings because then we get to pay it back over time. Using our savings, 
stretching out the payments over time so that we can do more than we would have been able to do had we just had to have our savings locked away and find some other source to finance these other things. I was just talking to a potential client the other day. They're $40,000 in debt on credit cards with 29% interest rates. And they're wondering whether they should pay that debt off first or start their first policy so they can start the infinite banking concept. And we explained how that would work. It might take a little longer to get rid of her debt, but she would have the interest and the principal back that she's paying to those credit cards. She understood. The infinite banking concept is not complicated. It's just different than what most people are doing financially, which is good because most people are not getting good financial results. The infinite banking concept is a way of thinking that can revolutionize your financial situation. Next week, we're going to go over my very first whole life policy that we bought to practice the infinite banking concept with. I was happy with that policy then. I'm delighted with it now. Next week, we'll go over that policy right here on the